Happy Wisdom Wednesday, everyone, and this week's book of the week is Inbound Marketing, Attract, Engage, and Delight Customers Online by HubSpot co-founders Brian Halligan and Darmesh Shaw. Now, I've been a huge fan of HubSpot for many years, so big of a fan that I've actually stolen a lot of strategies for them and translated it to the healthcare world, uh, from Mark Roberge's uh, approach to sales acceleration to a lot of the content that HubSpot does. I'm a huge fan of what they do. This is also why I'm an avid user of their platform. And no, this is not sponsored content. I'm actually just an honest to God fan of HubSpot and their platform. Now, before we get into the review, I did a book giveaway a few weeks ago to the person who had the best comment using the title of one of the books of the year for 2020. And the winner is Twitter user Delete Social Media, who of course, uh, very impressively, has a YouTube panel called No One No One, but they had the best uh, uh, post. <laughs> So congratulations on the book. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And here's a cool thing is that this user got a rare edition of Loser Thing by Scott Adams. The edition that they got has a typo or misprint because it's actually how, um, how untrained minds are ruining America, but the version that they got uh, has the word America switched with the world. So they got a rare version of it. Uh, hope you enjoy it. And I'll be doing more book giveaways like that soon. So while this is a bit outdated on the technical aspects, such as some you know specific things around SEO and, and digital, for the most part, the foundational principles here are super important in terms of how do you actually use inbound marketing? Meaning, how do you get customers to come to you versus sort of the old school outbound uh, showing up without permission marketing? Right, because nobody's interested in that. How do you get your uh, customers to your website? And as HubSpot, because of their name, indicates, how do you turn your actual website and brand as a hub for information and content for your customers? But before we talk about some key lessons from this book, I want to highlight something specific about HubSpot's, appro HubSpot's approach and a way for you to think about business. So with a little bit of internet magic, so, in the business world, we often like to think about things as funnels, right? You know, um, and it's very easy to see it that way because anytime you look at a conversion chart, it, it's just in a funnel, right? You know, you start with a lot of stuff on top, like let's say a lot of people who engage with your company at first, and then a smaller amount who engage even more, a smaller amount that engage even more until a few come out of the bottom, right? And those are the ones that convert. You know, so the concept of that makes sense, right? And again, in relation to a funnel, a conversion funnel, that's how we think about things. But here's the thing. Let's use that analogy in the physical world. Oh, I need one more thing, a little internet magic. So in the physical world, when we use a funnel, right, and we pour stuff on top, What comes on top all, all ends up going through this funnel. It all ends up here at the bottom. And then more specifically, if you haven't noticed, what ends up going on top never has any issues going through the bottom here because what ends up coming out down here does not impede what's going out up here, right? And if you think about this as leads, right? You just gotta keep adding more and more and more and hey, look, conversion. But that's the problem is that we're not dealing with the physical world in, in business, right? At least not conceptually. And it doesn't necessarily work that way because if we think about this as conversion, well, the stuff that's coming out here at the bottom, your new customers, your sales, right? Are not always 100% of what's coming in up on top. And more, more specifically and more importantly, what technically comes out down here is going to have a huge impact of what's coming in up here. You see, in the business world, if your customers love you, right, they rave about your product, they are, they are avid fans, then that's gonna help add more to the top. Except, what happens if you don't have customers that are happy, right, or people who love your product? Then, even when you find ways to get leads to come on top, not all of it's going to go through like that, right? Some of it's going to get stuck because people who become aware of your product and company up here, who find out about how people are feeling down here, and let's say they're not happy, decide that they're just going to 
spin right out. So technically, this is a flawed analogy when it comes to looking at a business in a holistic way. You see, here's a concept that we're all familiar with, is that if we end up with very happy customers, people who are key opinion leaders, raving fans, they leave great reviews, they refer other uh, peers to use your product or service, that actually feeds the top of the funnel. So in the physical world, like this funnel idea technically doesn't work. And so how do we replace that with something that makes a little bit more sense? Well, that's where HubSpot sort of pivoted and, and really changed a lot of marketers' minds when it comes to thinking about funnels. There's nothing wrong with funnels when it comes to certain campaigns, but in terms of how you should view your business at a high level, I'm gonna have Kyle from HubSpot here explain the HubSpot flywheel. A flywheel is a machine that stores rotational energy. When you add energy to a flywheel, it starts to spin. And if you add more energy, it spins faster. And unlike a funnel, where the only way to maintain a constant speed is to keep adding stuff to it, a flywheel will keep spinning unless some other force comes along and slows it down. From a business perspective, the rotation of the flywheel represents the growth of your business. And happy customers provide the energy that fuels that growth, either because they buy from you again or because they bring new customers to you by promoting your product to other people in their network. But if you produce unhappy customers, either by selling to people who are a bad fit for your offering or by over-promising and under-delivering, they'll work against your flywheel and slow your company's growth. And that makes complete sense, right? When you start focusing on these things, because the whole customer journey isn't just as simple as start to end and we're done and we go on and sell the next thing. Maybe 20, 30 years ago, before SaaS was even around, right? You just go and sell very expensive software and because the company invested, they're stuck with it, right? You move on to the next thing. We don't live in that world anymore. We live in the age of the internet, right? And so one other concept that I want to kind of point out is what... Uh, the co-founder of, of, of HubSpot, Brian Halligan, had to say about this when it, when it comes to sales and marketing and then pivoting also to invest more in customer success and support. When you're a startup and you don't have any darn customers, marketing matters a ton because you can't talk to any other customers if you're a potential customer. There's no word of mouth. There's no proof whether you're good or bad. But as you're growing and you've got a lot of customers and you're, and you're scaling your company up, your customers are actually your best channel to market. Uh, it's not your marketing. Marketing is, of course, very important, but if you really want to grow, you ought to consider moving some of your money from sales and marketing into customer service, into your products, so you're delighting your customers, because those delighted customers that your business over the long haul will grow, really grow on the backs of your successful customers. And this makes complete sense because even his former chief revenue officer, uh, Mark Robesh, who I interviewed in a podcast a month ago, he's come out with a great new ebook, who, which I'm a big fan of. Wait, let me go get that. The Science of Scale, where essentially he took this framework that he developed and put all the startups that he uh, uh, has and his uh, state to capital where he's uh, managing director at. And essentially the first big focus of it in the first year is not scaling. It's actually focused on retention and customer success. And so very much taking the philosophy that was developed at HubSpot and then adapting it and translating it into the SaaS world even more so, right? So we can see that these types of approaches in terms of this holistic look at business and marketing is something that makes sense the more we think about it, right? And in practice, it's a lot more effective because once you start focusing purely just on the funnel and conversions, which has its place in some areas, then all you focus on is putting a lot of money in terms of optimizing something that could technically be a lot more powerful if you thought about it differently. Which takes us back to the other book. Oh. <sighs> Better not use internet magic when you don't need it. And so when it comes to inbound marketing, one of the main philosophies that is talked about here that HubSpot uses is how do you get people to discover you? Right. And part of the part of that equation is content. And it's not just content and SEO optimization for your product. Okay, you're thinking about it the wrong way. You have to look at the kind of problems your customers are trying to solve, right? Related to your product and completely unrelated to your product. So if, for example, let's say you're in my world and you're selling uh, software for, for medical practices or in a healthcare setting, right? 
The wrong way to do it is to focus purely on creating content and optimizing SEO for problems that the software solves. We expand out higher and focus on other things that have to do with my customer, right? So for me, my customer are physicians. So physicians in my area are interested in entrepreneurship, they're interested in finance, they're interested in marketing, all these different things. And so how do we focus on creating a hub for information and content so people can land on your website and as you start to optimize to figure out what that journey is and how do you qualify certain leads, that's when you start worrying more about, se about segmentation and conversions, etc. But going back to the flywheel example, when you focus on those three tenets, right, you find ways to start really igniting this concept of lead generation because then your own customers become an extension of your company in terms of marketing your product, selling your product, and more importantly, giving you more content, whether it's case studies, customer testimonials, or even FAQs. And all these things in unison, again, help bring people to the website right, and discover you and engage with content. And then more importantly, social media has a big play in this as well because you can't just put it all on your website and wait for, wait for people to show up and, and engage with it. One thing that Mark Roberts used to tell a lot of salespeople, and again, this is coming from his uh, book, The Sales Acceleration Formula. Let me go get that one. So again, funny, orange. <laughs> In the sales acceleration formula, he told some of uh, all his sales, sales team members that if they spent a certain percentage of their time every month instead of cold calling and prospecting on social media, directly engaging with customers, having thoughtful conversations and genuinely providing help, then it makes it easier to convert them into actual customers, right? And so you go on social media and oftentimes I do this as well, I'll find you know prospective customers who... I think would be great for our business and would benefit from our product, but I'll start a relationship with them. I will maybe tweet at them, maybe I'll engage with them on a LinkedIn post, and then from time to time when it's appropriate, maybe if the topic they're talking about we happen to have a blog for, I'll leave a link to a blog article. And of course, that sends them to our website and that gets them to start engaging with the product, right? Again, the big thing about this, you know, if you wanna take one philosophy away from not only Mark's book, but this book as well, is how do you show up in a thoughtful, genuine way and in a helpful way to understand not only how your customers have a problem and how your product can solve it, that's easy. Think about it on a higher level as a marketer, right? What's the bigger problem that they're trying to solve? What are their key interests? And how do you as a brand provide that content, provide that help and support so that you can start creating more inbound, right? And once you have inbound, once people are coming to you, then it becomes a lot easier to understand who's gonna be a great fit, who's going to be a happy customer, and where you should put your resources. So that's the book of the week. Definitely go out and get it. Uh, if anything, go check out HubSpot. Go to their website, get in their funnel, right? Get in their flywheel, and see how they market to you, and see how their content has an influence to you as a marketer. So that's the book of the week. Happy Wisdom Wednesday, and as always, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.